There's been some, a number of interesting studies done in animal models where you grow human tumors uh, subcutaneously in the mice and you give different uh, dietary interventions and some very interesting work just showing that if you lower dietary fat in these animal models, in these mouse models, that you can significantly slow the growth rate of these rather aggressive human tumors that were growing in mice. So for example, some of the early work we did, we looked at varying corn oil level uh, in the diet. And so if you just lower the amount of corn oil in the mouse's diet, you can significantly slow the growth rate of a human prostate cancer. Why did the low fat intake have an impact on the mice? Uh, the fatty acid in corn oil, it's a polyunsaturated fat called linoleic acid, and that's converted to arachidonic acid, and that's a known a growth factor for prostate cancer. Tell me what you've been doing with a low-fat diet and fish oil in men. Yeah, so we initially started with some animal work where we showed that if you could increase the omega-3 level in the diet from fish oil, so there's two types of uh, polyunsaturated fats. Okay, there's the omega-6, which is from corn oil, and there's the omega-3, which is from fish oil. In the typical Western diet, we're very heavy on the corn oil, on the omega-6, and low on the omega-3. Whereas in the typical Asian Eastern diet, they have higher levels of omega-3, lower levels of the 6, and a lower risk of prostate cancer. So that's some of the data that really led us to do some animal work, where when we increase the fish oil in the diet and decrease the corn oil, that slowed the growth of these tumors in mice. And so we translated that work forward to a human study. Okay, and again, just draw up from underneath. And in the human study, we took men who were scheduled to undergo surgical removal of their prostate for prostate cancer. So these were men who were diagnosed with prostate cancer, and they were scheduled for their radical prostatectomy surgery. And we randomly assigned them to one of two groups. Uh, they were assigned to either get a typical Western diet or to get a low-fat diet with fish oil. And in the fish oil group, they, we reduced them down to 15% kilocalories from fat. It was a low-fat diet and gave them 5 grams of fish oil a day. So this was before they had the operation. They still had the tumor in place. Exactly. So they did this for four to six weeks before their surgery. We removed their prostate tissue. We also had blood to study from them uh, and urine. And we did studies on the tissues to see if we were in any, any way favorably impacting on the cancer. And what did you find? And so what we found, uh, interestingly, was there's a measurement that we do in cancer. It's called KI-67 measurement. And it's a measurement of how rapidly the cells are dividing. And we saw lower KI-67 levels in the men on the low-fat fish oil group as compared to the high-fat group. So what we know about KI-67 and proliferation is if you take a man with prostate cancer, if he have, has higher proliferation levels in his cancer, if more of his cancer cells are rapidly dividing, those men are more likely to have progression of their prostate cancer and die of their prostate cancer. So the fact that we were able to modify that with our short-term study is really encouraging for us that we may potentially have an effect uh, in long-term studies. But they also found that these omega-3 fatty acids found their way to the membranes on prostate cancer cells, the shrink wrap that surrounds them. And so you may, in a way, say you kind of are what you eat. You know, they, they ate this particular diet, and it also changed the makeup of their cells. Now, is that linked to how we affected the growth rate? We're not sure. We're actually doing other studies on the cancer tissue right now. Now, this could be an answer for men who are in a dilemma about what to do about their prostate cancer. They might have had a PSA test, a blood test, which was high, and then had a biopsy, which showed early prostate cancer, and they're not sure whether to have an operation. You see, quite a lot of men have to have had the operation for one man's life to be saved. Could fish swim to the rescue? That's an interesting, extremely important area of what to do with the man with a new diagnosis of prostate cancer. What, where we feel we fit in extremely well is many men are now choosing active surveillance. So many men with a new diagnosis are not choosing active therapy, but they're choosing to be monitored with prostate biopsies. So, so we're could a low-fat diet and, and omega-3s make a difference to their outcome? Right. So we've, we've designed a trial where we can now, um, for men who are interested and who are choosing active surveillance, 
we can study our dietary intervention in them and they're getting regular prostate biopsies and giving blood samples so we want to use we want to study those patients and see if hopefully uh, diet can be beneficial for them. You've also studied weight loss. Tell me what you found. In animal models it's well known that if you go through caloric restriction or weight loss you can significantly and favorably affect tumor growth for a variety of malignancies. And so we now want to, we now are applying this again in a pre-prostatectomy study design, kind of a pre-surgery design, where the men are randomized to weight loss or not. And so we're interested in seeing if we can favorably affect the biology of the, of the cancer in those men as well. And green tea? Green tea is also of tremendous interest where we're looking at uh, green tea, which is, has some potent antioxidants or polyphenols within the green tea. So we've previously shown that men, if they consume green tea, some of those components, those antioxidant components get taken up into their prostate cancer tissue. Uh, now we're uh, wrapping up enrollment for a trial where we can study if we're affecting the biology of the tissue as well. Now those studies were into men who already had prostate cancer. The really big question is, is whether or not it could make a difference to preventing prostate cancer in the first place. Prevention in prostate cancer is extremely challenging right now, doing studies in prevention. Uh, extremely costly, it takes a long time to develop this disease. There's been a number of prevention studies already, looking at selenium, looking at various medications, which can also have side effects. It's going to be tough to do a prevention study and really my interest is more in applying dietary interventions to men with prostate cancer you know, to see if we can favorably impact uh, potentially on the cancer and potentially on uh, the aggressiveness of the cancer.